With basic probability and probability of multiple events under our belts, next we're going to look at what is called conditional probability. And we're going to begin this with some terms and definitions. For starters, conditional probability is the prob likelihood or probability of an event occurring given that another event has already occurred. So when we're looking at conditional probability, like the probability of multiple events, we have to have multiple items here. And the way we write a conditional probability is the probability of A given B. So that means we're looking at event A happening knowing that event B has already happened. Now, helping to organize information so that we can look at it in regards to conditional probability, we use what are called contingency tables. Now, these are two-way frequency tables that show information regarding two different categories of information on the same subject. Now, what that means for us is that we have a table where topic A is given along one side, and topic B is given along another, and the intersection is where the topic A and B come together. Now we're going to be using these through the course of this lesson, so we'll get familiar with them. So let's look at how a conditional probability would be computed. Using the table, a contingency table, find the conditional probabilities. Here we have types of vehicles found in a parking lot, SUV, compact, or mid-sized, and the classification of these vehicles, whether they are foreign or domestic. So the information that is found in each individual section is determined by the cross of those two sections. The items that are located here are compact cars that are of foreign make. The items here are domestic cars that are mid-size. All the items in this column are SUVs, so a total of 85 of them, and all the items in this row are those that are of foreign build, so 90 of them in total, broken up into three different categories. Now with that information, we want to find probability of F given C. That means the probability that a vehicle chosen is going to be of foreign build given the fact that it is a compact car. And the way we compute this is going to be the probability of F given C is the probability of F and C divided by the probability of C. So the probability of F and C, meaning where do we have foreign compact cars, that is here, there's 50 of them, divided by the probability of C, which is all compact cars, which is 50 plus 100, or 150. Now simplifying this, we get one-third, or 33.3%. So probability of F given C is 33 and one-third. A third of the cars are foreign if we're only looking at the compact cars. Next, let's look at the probability of F given S, probability of a foreign car given the fact that it's an SUV. So again, this is the probability of F and S divided by the probability of S. Probability of F and S is 20. Probability of S, all SUVs, is 85. 20 divided by 85 is going to be 4 seventeenths. Now 4 sixteenths would be a quarter, so 4 seventeenths a little bit smaller than that. This is going to be about 23%. A little bit off there doing the computations in my head. Now, probability of D given M, probability of a domestic car given the fact that we're only looking at mid-sized vehicles. So this is going to be the probability of D and, sorry, that should be D and M divided by the probability of M. Probability of D and M, we have 45 domestic midsize, 
so 45, divided by probability of M, all mid-sized cars, is 65. Both these are divisible by 5, so when we simplify this, we get 9 thirteenths. Again, 9 twelfths is about a quarter. This is a little bit smaller, so we're going to be around 24% again. A little bit off, but again, mental computations. Now, our last one we're going to look at is the probability of S given F. Now, we already did the probability of F given S. This is different because in what we were looking at before with F given S says we want to know the full-size cars when we only look at SUVs. Now we want to look at the SUVs, or probably get an SUV, if we only looked at the foreign cars. So the way this works out is the probability, again, of F and S divided by the probability of F. Probability of F and S was 20. That information has not changed. But the probability of F is all foreign cars. There are 90 of them. So 20 divided by 90 is 2 ninths, which is about 22%. Conditional probabilities are not commutative. When you change the group that you're looking at, the assumed information, then you change how the result comes out because you're looking at a different sample space to begin with. So having conditional probabilities works out nicely using this formula. Probability of at A given B is probability of A and B divided by probability of B. But we can work with this to do a little bit extra. Having uh, tree diagrams is very helpful in organizing the information and solving the equation of this formula is helpful as well. So let's take a look at those. The probability that Mike works overtime and it rains is 2.8%. The weather forecast calls for a 50% chance of rain. Find the probability that Mike will work overtime given that it rains. So when we start looking at this, if we have the information already with us that the probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. If we solve this for the numerator on the right, we would have the probability of B times the probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B. So we can, given any two pieces of information, we can find the third. So now the only question is what information do we need or what information do we have and what do we need to find? So probability that Mike works overtime and it rains, so that is probability of overtime and rain is 2.8%. The weather forecast calls for a 50% chance of rain. So that's the probability of rain equals 50%. Find the probability that Mike probability that Mike will work overtime given that it rains is what we need. So what we're going to be looking at is our first formula here, probability of A given B. So let's set it up. Probability, oh, the probability of overtime given rain equals probability of overtime and rain, which is 0 0.028, divided by the probability of just rain, which is 0 0.5. If we divide 28 thousandths by 5 tenths, we are going to come out with 56 thousandths, interpreting this out into percent form, we have a 5.6% chance that he's going to have to work overtime given the fact that it rains. So these formulas are interchangeable. 
that they're able to be solved for one another and given certain pieces of information, you can then move forward and extrapolate what you need. This is kind of a brief lesson, but it covers conditional probability, the fact that we're looking at subsets within a population in order to get the information that we need. Make sure you have these ideas down and are ready to move forward.